Uh, be seated, please. Good morning, church. Good morning. God is good, isn't he? All the time. Amen. We serve an awesome God this morning. Amen. We need to realize that. We, we have a Father in heaven that loves us very, very much. <coughs> yes. And you know, in our service should reflect that this morning. Yes. Our service should reflect how much love God has for us and how much we love God. Amen. So that needs to be <coughs> seen and shown in us. Uh, we need to give him our best every time yeah. we come together. Uh, also, I want to welcome, our, I want to say guests, but uh, our members of our church family that are here. Welcome everyone that's here this morning, and, and thank y'all so much for being here. I do have one quick reminder before we get into the lesson this morning. Uh, I want to remind us of something uh, real quickly. June the 30th, we have five Sundays in this month. So June 30th, the last Sunday of this month, uh, uh, Mr. Will, uh, let me get, make sure I get his name right, Mr. Will Hester of Herald of Truth will be here. He will be here for the Sunday school class. So those of us, and I ask that uh, be here for 9 o'clock for the Sunday school class to, so Mr. Will Hester can explain to us everything we know about, we need to know about Herald of Truth, about all the messages that they're sending out through uh, a radio, all the message, the new technology that they're using uh, to help get the Word of God out. And not only uh, throughout the whole world, but they're doing it in communities. They're doing it in uh, uh, communities that are uh, less fortunate, I guess you could say. And they're using it to spread the word. So, And we're supporting this mission. So I ask that everyone come and see what Herald of Truth is about. If you have any questions, I know he will answer. Also, he will be speaking that Sunday morning uh, on the 30th. So let's remember that and please be here for that as well. Okay, happy Father's Day to each and every one here. Now, whether you've been a father for many, many years or you're just recently a father, it doesn't matter. You know why? Because you will always be a father. That's right. You will be one till the day you die, and when you die, you will leave a legacy behind that you will be remembered by. You will leave your lessons, your teachings, and your things behind. So it's important that we realize how important it is the, the, the I say position or the, the, the chore we have been given or the, the privilege, I should say, we have been given to be a father. So uh, we need to, to focus on that as well this morning. So I have some things I wish to pass out this morning to our fathers. And it's, it's not really a gift. It's a gift, but it's not really a gift. What it is meant to be is a reminder. Because our sermon this morning is going to focus around uh, uh, this reminder that everyone's getting. It's good. It looks like an ink pen, but it's more than an ink pen. It has a level, and it has a measuring part. And if you take this part off, it can be a reversible screwdriver. But what it is, every time we look at this, I want us to remember something about being a father and about this gift. And what this is to remind us that we are to be and to remind us who we are. So, gentlemen, thank you all for passing that out this morning. <coughs> now, when I, was, uh, when I was a young boy growing up, I always seemed to get in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I know that's hard to believe, right? I never could figure that out either. But as a young boy, I would always seemed to find myself getting in trouble. Now, one of the main things that would get me in trouble is I would love to play with my father's tools. And even though they was old and wore out, they was his tools, it was daddy's tools, so they was cool. And what, the reason I would get in trouble is I would leave them out, and he would have to go look for them. Or I would leave them out and he would run over with the lawnmower. That, that didn't go over real well. And the other thing I would get in trouble with is a lot of times I would lose them and I would forget where I put them or I would get preoccupied with something else and I would leave his tools out and when he got ready for them, he couldn't find them. So I stayed in trouble that a lot. Now whether they was old and used up, they was cool because they was dad's tools. Now as men, we all have tools. We all have projects that we do. Some of the projects that I have are, are, are very important and I need to get on them right away this week. 
And there's some I have that are not that important that I, or, or I can just casually get to them as I need. But we all have projects to do and we all have tools that we use to do these projects. Now the most important tool or the most important project that we will have as fathers is to build a home. Right. Now, I'm not talking a home of wood, mortar, bricks, or <coughs> nails. I'm talking a home. A home where the foundation is built on Jesus Christ. Amen. Because, fathers, we need to realize it's not about us. There comes a time when we're going to have to put that foolish pride right. that we have to the side. That's right. And realize that we need help building our homes. That's right. That we need to focus and have our foundation built on Jesus Christ. Now, every father is put on this earth to build something, to be a creation of something. As fathers, we are to build this home. And, and I had to ask myself, when I got married many years ago, I knew I had to establish a home, that we was to establish a house. Five years later, when I found out that I was going to be a dad, I knew then that I needed help because I wanted it done correctly. I, 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 as being in the ministry for many years, we see so many homes and we so many, see so many families that are so dysfunctional because the father's not present. But I, I, I've learned something else as well. There are so many times that the father is present, but he's still not there. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we need to learn to is and, and, and to not build a house, but to build a home. That's right. Where God is the center. Well, God is the leader. Well, God is the security that is in our home. Amen. We need to put our pride aside and let God help us build that home. Let's look at uh, Psalms chapter 120, Psalms 127, verses 1 through 5. Psalms 127, verses 1 through 5. It says, Unless the Lord builds the house, his builder's work is for nothing. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the man who watches over it stays awake for nothing. You rise up early and you go to bed late and work hard for your food, all for nothing. For the Lord gives to his loved ones even while they sleep. See, children, verse 3, children are a gift from the Lord. The children born to us are our special reward. The children of young men are like arrows in the hands of a soldier. Happy is the man who has many of them. They will not be put to shame when they speak in the gates with those who hate them. Fathers, this morning, dads, the best thing we can do is build a home and let God be the security in our home. I'm not saying don't go get a security system. What I'm saying is we need to allow God to watch over our home. Amen. Though we have one already built, we have it established. And you know what I used to, I remember when I was growing up, Father's Day, I didn't want to go to church. Because I knew it would be the same thing. But I heard a minister say one morning that you young men that's out there that one day will be a father, you need to hear this more than, than anyone else. And I think our young men this morning needs to hear this. That... We, we, the best thing we can build in our homes is our devotion to God. Having, having Him protect our homes and having Him as the head of our home. You know, as a minister, as the minister of this church, you know the best thing that I can give this church? The best thing I can give this church is not some dynamic preaching. It's not some wise counsel. It's not some strategic leadership. It's true devotion to God. Amen. And when I have true devotion to God, others will follow. That's right. And fathers, if we have true devotion to God, our children will follow. That's yeah. right. And, and that's the best thing that we can possibly give them. Uh, uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 6. If y'all would, let's turn there, those that are following in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 6 is actually in the Jewish faith. This is called the Shema. And what this means is it's a Jewish prayer that is to be prayed morning and to be prayed evening. It's, and the reason for this is to remind the home who they are to serve. And they are to say this every day, morning and night. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Now look at verse 7. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit down at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. <coughs> tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Verse 7, you know, it says, impress them on your children. It's telling you to be the example. Right. It's telling you that, that, that we are to be the example to our children. Not just sometimes. All the time. But all the time. Amen. It, it, it's, it's to be uh, 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 the integrity that, that we have as, as fathers. We're, when we're walking with them and... and uh, First thing we do in the morning and the last thing we do at night. These should be impressed upon our children. But it all starts with a good foundation, doesn't it? Yes, yep. Every home starts with a good foundation. If your foundation is bad, your home will not stand. And your home will not last. Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. We'll start in verse 10. Because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have. And that is Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, when we have, we have to realize that if we do not have that foundation, and we we can build anything we want on any foundation you have, but if it's not secure in Jesus Christ, trust me, it will fall. There will be all kind of uh, uh, mismeasurements. There will be all kind of, of 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 broken things to fix because it's not on a solid foundation. Uh, verse twelve: Anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. But on the judgment day, Father will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The Father will show if a person's work has any value. If the, if the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The building will be saved, but someone barely escapes through the wall of flame. Now, as I said, foundation is the most important. It must be level and it must be square. Anytime I look at this pen and I see the level that is on this pen, it's to remind me the integrity that I should have as a father. It should remind me that God is the measuring line that I need to use to build my home. If I want it to be square, if I want it to be solid, if I want it to stand, it needs to be level. And it needs to be measured by the grace of God. Amen. You can mess up with just a very slight measurement. You ever heard the proverb, measure twice, cut once? There's an old saying that you measure twice and cut once. No matter how many times I cut that board, it still comes up short. <laughs> we need to measure twice and cut once. And what that means for us is to take time to check and ensure what we are doing before you take irreversible actions. Because once you have cut, you cannot put it back. What you said, you cannot take back. Actions sometimes, once they're done, they're done. We need to measure twice and cut once. Cutting that, I remember, we, we was remodeling our home what, in several years, quite a few years ago now, actually. And, and to me, the hardest, and I'm no carpenter, but the hardest thing for me to do was when I was lining up the sheetrock was for the, the light switches and for the plug-in area, getting that measurement. I'm sure there's a trick to it. I just don't know what it is. I'm not that smart. But if I, my measurement was off just a little bit, everything went, was, was off. Then I would have to fill that in and, and take time to fill that in. Or I would have to wind up getting another sheet of sheetrock with wasted material. It, it was a waste because I mismeasured. I didn't follow the right guideline to, to do. So, uh, and, and for, for dads, uh, 
The best thing we can do is learn to listen. Is learn to listen to the Word of God. It doesn't have to be off by much to be a serious problem. The same is true with the level. If you don't want your walls to be crooked, or you don't want things to be messed up from as it goes, then make sure they're level. Make sure they're secure in the Word of God. Let's look at Psalms 119. Psalms 119, verse 9. We'll start in verse 9. How can a young man keep his ways pure? It's the question, isn't it? As fathers, how can we how can we keep our ways pure? By living by the word. I have looked for you with all my heart. You do not let me turn away from you do not let me turn from your law. Your word have I hid in my heart, that I may not sin against you. Great and honor are you, O Lord, teach me the law. I have told you with my lips of all the law of your mouth. I have found as much joy in following your law as one finds in much riches. I will think about your law and have respect for your ways. I will be glad in your law. I will not forget your ways. See, God's word is the plumb line and your measuring stick. You never measure up when you take your measurements from the standards of the world around you. Our standards of measurement must come from God. If they're from the world, then they will be wrong. Give your family a reason to say no when they don't have the courage to say no on their own. Be that example. It will, if, you, if we show our children how to compromise on integrity, we're not helping them build anything but integrity, less integrity. The more our sinner we are, the more mess it's going to make. Proverbs 20, verse 7. A righteous man that walketh in his integrity, blessed are his children after him. A father's integrity will benefit his children if we live out what he teaches. Now, will we make mistakes as fathers? Yes, I make them every day. Right. But the integrity that God's Word tells me is to live up to those wrongs. Right. To admit my wrongs. To repent of my sins. And show my son the example that a father should be. That's right. And if I had a daughter, it would teach her the kind of man she needs to marry. That's right. By holding true to my integrity. Admitting my wrongs. And confessing of my sins. Live with nothing to hide. Integrity means doing what is right when no one is watching. If you don't do what is right, you can't expect your children to do what is right. This morning I want to read a, uh, this is some song lyrics. It's a country song. I don't know who wrote it, so I can't give them credit for this this morning. I don't know who wrote it. I don't know who sang it, but I found it, and I want to read it to everyone because it, it, it makes so much sense, and it ties in so much with what we're trying to get across this morning. It says, driving through town, just my boy and me, with a happy meal in his booster seat, knowing that he can't have his toy until his nuggets were gone. Green light, uh, green traffic light turns straight to red. I hit my brakes, and I mumbled under my breath. His fries were a flying, and his orange drink covered his lap. Well, then my four-year-old son said a four-letter word. And I was concerned, so I said, son, now where did you learn to talk like that? He said, I've been watching you, Dad. Ain't that cool? <laughs> I'm your little buckaroo. I want to be just like you. I want to eat all my food, and I want to grow tall as you are. We got cowboy boots, and we got camo pants. Yeah, we're just alike. Hey, ain't that, ain't that how we are, Dad? I want to do everything you do. So I've been watching you. We go back home, and I went to the board, and I bowed my head, and I prayed real hard. I said, Lord, please help me with my stupid self. Then this side, this side of bedtime later that night, turning on my son's Scooby-Doo nightlight, he crawled out of bed and got down on his knees. He closed his little eyes. He folded his hands. He spoke to God like he was talking to a friend. And I said, son, now where did you learn to pray like that? He said, I've been watching you, Dad. Ain't that cool? I'm your little buckaroo. I want to be just like you. I want to eat all my food, and I want to grow as tall as you are. We like fixing things, and we like holding Mama's hand. Yeah, we just alike. Ain't that cool, Dad? 
I want to do everything you do, so I've been watching you. With tears in my eyes, I wrapped him in a hug and said, my little bear is growing up. And he said, but when I'm big, I still know what to do because I've been watching you, Dad. Ain't that cool? I'm your buckaroo. I want to be like you. I want to eat all my food and grow as tall as you. And then I'll be as strong as Superman and we'll be just alike, won't we, Dad? But I can do everything you do because I've been watching you. You know, when Terry was, was little, sometimes I would, would, would hear him say things. And, 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 and when we would be in the company of others, he would say things. And they would say, son, where you heard that at? And he said, well, it was from my dad. That helped me to realize something important, that I must be square and I must be level. That's right. That I have to be my integrity. That's right. Needs to be the same in front of him as it would be anywhere else. That's right. If not, I am not building a solid home. I just have a structure. We have to build a, 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 we as men, we have a bad reputation of not listening. That's our reputation. Of course, I don't believe that's true. <laughs> but we got the reputation, right? But we got the reputation of not listening. Susan had read something about it in a medical magazine, but I wasn't really listening to what she was saying, so I don't remember what she said. But we have the reputation of good, with good listening. We, we are, are known for not following instructions. That seems to be the, the, burden that follows us as men. Putting something together with a paper booklet to me is worthless. I have, we, we as men, we have superior intelligence. We should know where these things go, right? So I don't follow instructions. You know what instructions are for? Somebody who wants to get it right the first time. That's what instructions are for. <laughs> the Word of God is our instructions. If you want to get it right the first time, follow the instructions of God. Amen. If we're going to build a home, if we're going to establish a home, if we want our foundation solid, we want it level, if we want it secure, because if our wall is crooked, then it'll be crooked throughout the whole house. I remember when I put a roof, we put a metal roof on our home before we sold it. And the, the, the guy that put the roof on, he told me, he said, man, whoever <clears throat> built this roof, they're, all, they're, they're an inch and a half off. And he said, I made up for it as I went, but he said, that's not good. He said, now you, you're always going to... It, it looked good, but if you stand back and look, you can see where he made up the difference. If you start off crooked, you'll always be crooked. If you start off straight, you will always be straight. You can build on something straight and something solid. When it comes to, to being a dad, don't let your pride get in the way. Toss your foolish pride to the side. If you want to build a healthy family, you've got to read the instructions of God. You have to read the Bible. Amen. You know, it's like it's like we have received this perfect kit from God, but it's assembled by imperfect people. So along the way, we mess things up. Along the way, we leave parts out. Along, along the way, we, we, we try to put parts in there that's not there. But we have God's word to make sure that we can make these things right. We will never be perfect. We will never do it the right way. But if we follow the word of God, if we follow his instruction manual, there's so important information. It will tell us how to be a good husband. It will tell us how to discipline our children. It will tell us how to build a healthy home. It will tell us how to be a man of God. It's all there. Yes. It's all here. We, 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 we don't, if we don't read the instructions, we're going to waste time. Because our pride will get in the way. We, we have to have something to go by. We have to have learn integrity. We learn this from the Word of God. 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that all Scripture is inspired by God. Right. And is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Right. That's the instructions, isn't it? To tell me what is wrong. And if I have foolish pride, I will ignore that instruction. I need to humble myself and, and realize one of the best things I can ever learn to do is to take correction. As a father, that's one of the things we need to toss the pride aside and learn how to take correction. I remember one time, uh, and, and usually uh, as men, when we go to take correction, what's our first action? 
we defend ourselves. I remember one time me and Susan was going out of town. Uh, I, had to, I was going to speak somewhere. I don't remember where it was at. And I was on my way out of town. So we stopped to eat. And the guy comes up to me and he says, uh, what do you want to eat? And I'm working on my notes, you know. And I said, man, just give me a hamburger. He said, well, what? I said, man, just give me a hamburger. <coughs> well, when he walks away, boy, she pinches me. I said, what are you doing? She said, you was ugly to that guy. You go talking and speak some way, you ugly to that guy. And she went on about 27 other things I did wrong before we got there. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is she was right. You know, even a broken mirror has a reflection. That's right. She may have not said it the right way, but it was true, wasn't it? We have to learn to take corrections, quit being so defensive and so prideful, and realize that these instructions are to help us with what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong, teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. As far as the best thing we can give our families is devotion to God. Amen. Be a father of integrity. Amen. To admit our wrongs and, and, and to correct our actions when we do make them wrong. And to let the, our, our children know what path they need to follow. That's right. Along the way we make mistakes. God knows I've made so many in my life. But Terry knows. He knows that when he makes mistakes, he knows where to go. He knows what to do to make these corrections. Many of you have all these tools you need to build a great family. You're just not paying attention to the instructions. So this morning, if we have a need, you know, it's, it's nothing wrong with coming and, and, and admitting our wrongs, and we can lay hands on you as a congregation, and we can pray for you. If you need water for baptism, they can be made ready. If we need just anything that we possibly need, we cannot let these opportunities pass us by. I do not know if I will be here tomorrow. I do not know. I don't, we don't need to let these problems linger in our lives. We need to start setting the, the level foundation. We need to start letting God measure the things we need right now. And it can start this morning with the simple coming forward and have us pray for you. So if you have any need, we will have a song that will invite you to come and sing. Uh, so please feel, feel free to come as we stand and as we sing.